Hello, my name is Lisa Evers, and I'm an advisor for the Registered Nursing Program at Chattanooga State. On behalf of Dr. Harris, our Assistant Dean of Nursing and Allied Health, and our faculty and staff, I welcome you to this presentation about our nursing program. So it's a great time to be a nurse. It's been in the news for several years about a nursing shortage, and that shortage is projected to continue. Baby boomers are aging, and with an aging population, the need for health care is growing. An internet search provides many other reasons that contribute to this shortage. When one completes a nursing program and successfully passes the NCLEX, which is the licensing exam, then that person's profession is a registered nurse. However, one has many different career options as a registered nurse. One's nursing license is also transportable. One may be issued either a single state license or a multi-state license. It's a great time to be a nursing student at Chattanooga State. Our program is ranked fifth among nursing programs in Tennessee for NCLEX pass rates. We have a current curriculum. At this time, the curriculum is integrated, but a revised curriculum will be implemented fall 2021. Our nursing program has quality faculty. The terminal degree that is required of full-time faculty in this program is a master's degree. Many faculty have their doctoral degrees, nurse practitioner certification, certifications in their areas of expertise, and postgraduate work. All faculty must participate in professional development activities and continuing education offerings. We have dedicated classrooms for our nursing classes, a dedicated skills lab for the nursing program, and a shared skills lab with the practical nursing program. There's also a wet lab for IV practice and a simulation lab. Our program outcomes for the day and the night programs and the transition program are listed on the respective program pages. And on this slide, I have provided you with the links to those pages for those programs. So what am I going to address in this presentation? Uh, I'm going to provide you with information about the different program options, the courses that are required, the application, and the selection process. Starting with our day program option, a new class is admitted each fall semester to the day program. The deadline for application is March 1st of every year. Approximately 100 students are accepted to the program and the day program length is four semesters, meaning students attend the nursing, take the nursing courses fall, spring, fall, spring. Because the curriculum is in the middle of being revised, uh, the number of class and clinical days, as well as the times for each, are still to be determined. The night program admits a class every other fall semester in the odd years. The next class will be accepted fall 2021. The deadline for application is March the 1st. If that day falls on a weekend, applications are accepted through the next business day. Approximately 50 students are accepted to the program. The program length for the night program is five semesters and students attend and take their classes fall, spring, fall, spring, then fall. This class is a laptop computer class. Because the curriculum is being revised, the number of class and clinical days and the times for each are to be determined. 
one needs to consider all aspects of one's life before deciding which program to apply to. Family, work schedule, are you an up with the chickens kind of person or are you a night owl have to be considered. If one applies to both programs, then that applicant will be put into the day program applicant database by default. Transition is an adaptation of the nursing program that awards credit for knowledge and experience to the licensed practical nursing nurse and the licensed paramedic. Transition takes place during the summer semester. LPNs earn five credit hours and paramedics earn seven credit hours for the course. Then advanced placement credit is awarded for the first two semesters of either the day or the night nursing programs. Those students then complete either the last two semesters of the day program or the last three semesters of the night program. Applicants to the transition program must submit a form documenting 400 hours of work experience in their respective career fields. LPNs who apply to transition into the day program can apply every summer. LPNs who apply to transition into the night program apply in even years only. The next application cycle for this group will be 2022. Paramedics apply in even years only and have the option of selecting either the day or the night program options. The next cycle, application cycle for paramedics will be 2022. The deadline for applying to transition is January the 15th. If that day falls on a weekend or a holiday, applications are accepted through the next business day. The transition program is a hybrid course. Lecture content is online. Lab and clinical takes place in class or an assigned facility. Announced exams are given in class on the specified Tuesdays. Wednesday is a lab or a clinical day. When it is a lab day, LPNs are in class from 8 o'clock in the morning until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Paramedics are in class from 8 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. If it is a clinical day, students are in the clinical setting from 6.30 in the morning until 2.30 in the afternoon. If not accepted for admission to the transition program, one has the option of submitting an application to the traditional cohort. The deadline for application to the traditional cohort is March the 1st. If accepted into the traditional cohort, then all semesters must be completed. There is no advanced credit. The nursing program curriculum is a combination of general education courses, support courses, and nursing courses. So what is a prerequisite? A prerequisite is a course that is required before one can take another course or start a program such as the nursing program. All applicants to the nursing program must be at college level for reading, writing, and math. This placement is based on ACT test scores, next, AccuPlacer Next Generation scores, or completion of previous college level courses related to these categories. Chemistry is a prerequisite for all options in the nursing program. 
This prerequisite can be met if an applicant had a full credit of high school chemistry with a grade of B or higher. If using high school chemistry to meet the prerequisite, the applicant must submit an unofficial copy of high school transcripts with the nursing program application. If the student did not meet the grade requirement or did not have high school chemistry, then a C or better in a college level chemistry course with a lab will meet the prerequisite. There are additional prerequisites for specific programs. In addition to chemistry, prerequisites for the Knight program are Anatomy and Physiology 1, Anatomy and Physiology 2, and Microbiology. In addition to chemistry, prerequisites for the transition program are Anatomy and Physiology 1, Anatomy and Physiology 2, Microbiology, Introduction to Psychology, and Lifespan Development Psychology. One can apply to the nursing program if prerequisites are still being taken or are still needed. However, if a course is a prerequisite to the nursing program or for the nursing program, then that prerequisite must be successfully completed with a C or higher prior to starting the program. Required general education courses include English Composition 1, a Humanities elective, and Chattanooga State has a list of approved courses that meet this requirement. And those courses come from the categories of Fine Arts, Literature, Humanities, Philosophy, and then one can take a religion course, Religions of the World, that meets that requirement. Students also need a college-level math elective. The most common courses that nursing students take are Math 1010, this is Math for General College Studies, Math 1530, which is Introductory Statistics, or Math 1130, College Algebra. There are prerequisites that are determined by the math department before one can take College Algebra. Anatomy and Physiology 1, Anatomy and Physiology 2, and Microbiology are support courses for our nursing curriculum. If these science courses were taken more than five calendar years from the year that one applies to the nursing program, then they must be retaken. For example, if an applicant applying to the nursing program in 2021 took Anatomy and Physiology 1 in the year 2015 and Anatomy and Physiology 2 in 2016, then Anatomy and Physiology 1 would have to be retaken because it is six calendar years from 2021. Anatomy and Physiology 2 that this student took uh, would be within the five calendar years of 2021. Now let's say that that applicant is not accepted and decides to reapply to the program in 2022. Then what happens to Anatomy and Physiology 2? It would have to be repeated because it now falls outside the five calendar year limit for the course. Introduction to Psychology and Lifespan Development Psychology are also support courses. It is a psychology department requirement that Introduction to Psychology be a prerequisite for Lifespan Development Psychology. The nursing course identifiers are still being determined with the curriculum revision. However, normal function and health promotion will be addressed in the fundamental nursing courses with abnormal function and care of complex problems addressed in subsequent nursing courses. 
Students will receive instruction in adult medical surgical nursing, the nursing care of older adults, children, and adolescents, maternal infant nursing care, psychiatric mental health nursing care, critical care, and then leadership and management topics, things such as time management, prioritization, delegation, and supervision, uh, conflict resolution, managing resources. All of these are management and leadership skills that nurses need in order to practice effectively. While in the nursing program, students will be assigned to a variety of clinical facilities and agencies. Clinical assignments are at Erlanger, CHI Memorial, and Park Ridge facilities, and students go to Moccasin Bend for their psychiatric nursing experience. Different community-based experiences are provided throughout the program. Some notable experiences that our students have done in the past include, uh, we had students in our third semester of the day program participate in a health fair with the community kitchen in Chattanooga. Students in the night program participate in a high impact practice experience with middle school students focusing on healthy lifestyle behaviors. Nursing is different. The degree earned by nursing by students completing the nursing program is an associate of applied science in registered nursing degree. During the course of this program, students progress from knowledge to application, and all of this is in preparation to be successful on the NCLEX. So what are the steps to apply? Listening to this program uh, or attending an information session uh, is one of the first steps uh, that should be completed. Attending a session is not mandatory. However, listening to this or attending a session in person provides one with a basic overview of the nursing program and the application process. All applicants must be fully admitted to the college to, in order to be included on the application database. So the link that is provided on this slide is uh, where one would go to apply to the college. Uh, you can go to the school's webpage at www.chattanoogastate.edu and click on the admission tab. It's important to remember to apply as a credit degree-seeking student. Then one needs to submit high school transcripts and transcripts from all other colleges attended to admissions and records. If requested, one would need to take the placement test. Applicants can check their application status at the link on the slide or there will be a link when you click on the admissions tab on the school's web page. There will be a link under, on that admissions page to be able to check your application status. After admission requirements have been met, schedule an advising appointment to develop an academic plan. Advisors do need to know if an advisee had high school chemistry with a B or higher, or if that uh, prospective applicant or the advisee is going to need chemistry. Advisors are able to look up if learning support course requ courses are required. It's important to have transcripts sent to admissions and records for evaluation so an advisee can be appropriately advised as to the courses that one needs to take. After advising, the student registers for and begins taking the required curriculum courses. Taking and successfully completing as many of the general education courses as necessary before applying to the program 
equals more points for selection. Transfer and online courses are accepted for credit if they were taken at a regionally accredited institution. In order to be included on the application database, applicants must have a minimum 2.0 institutional or overall GPA, which is calculated from the grades of courses taken at Chattanooga State. One must also have a minimum 2.0 inclusive GPA, which is calculated from grades of courses taken at other institutions. This GPA may also include courses taken at Chattanooga State. The nursing program also calculates a program GPA based on grades in courses required by the program. The minimum nursing program GPA to be included on the database is 2.5. All right, this particular slide gives you the average program GPA for the applicants uh, that were accepted to each program option. So the day 2020 class had an average program GPA of 3.55. The night program, that class was selected in for fall 2019, the average program GPA was 3.25. The LPN transition day program that was selected for summer 2020 uh, had an average program GPA of 3.27. The LPN transition night program had an average program GPA of 3.24. Paramedics who were selected to transition in 2020 had an average program GPA of 3.19. The next step to apply to the program is submission of your application to the nursing program. A link for the application is on the nursing program webpage for the day and night programs and the transition program. Currently, the link has been removed for the application to be revised for 2021. It should be posted on the web page either in late August or September. An applicant will log in with their Tiger ID and password, complete the application online, and then print the application for submission. Required documents to submit with the application are an unofficial copy of high school transcript showing chemistry credit if one is using that to meet the chemistry prerequisite. If applying to transition, those applicants are going to have to include the 400 hours of employment verification form. A copy of the T's total test score and the individual scores, and also a points calculation summary. If one's name or contact information should change after submission of an application to the program, please notify the nursing program. Register to take the TEAS test at Chattanooga State using the link that is provided on this slide, or if you are on the nursing program webpage, there will be a link for TEAS test information, and then the link to register for the test is on that page. If registering to take the TEAS test in a different location, it's important to go to the ATI testing website. So one's going to go to www .atitesting.com. The test fee may or may not be higher. It is important to prepare for the test. There are four parts, science, reading, math, and English. If one has an accommodation plan through Disability Support Services, please communicate that with the testing center.
it is important to schedule early to take the TEAS test. The TEAS test can be taken every six weeks, but it does have to be taken within two years of the application deadline. At this time, no minimum scores are required. This slide shows the average TEAS test composite scores for the applicants accepted into each program. So the class that was selected for the day program in 2020, uh, the average composite TEAS test score was 82.40. The night program class selected in 2019 had an average composite score of 76.94. The LPN transition day class accepted for 2020 had an average TEAS test composite score of 77.37. And the LPN selected for the transition night program 2020 had an average composite TEAS test score of 75.6. Those who were selected for paramedic transition in 2020 had a composite score of 84.11. The points calculator is located at the link provided on the slide. If you are on the nursing program webpage, there is also a link for the points calculator on the webpage. There are 13 course points. Course points are awarded for the required courses that a student has completed through the fall semester prior to applying in the spring. Anatomy and Physiology 1 and 2 are three course points each. Microbiology is two course points. All other courses except chemistry are one course point. Although chemistry is a prerequisite for the program, no course points are awarded since the prerequisite can be met with a high school chemistry credit. As stated, the nursing program GPA is calculated only for the courses that have been completed and that those are the ones that received points. The GPA is multiplied by 10 for points. The TEAS test total score, the composite score, is divided by two. The course points, the program GPA points, and the test points are then added for total points. This slide shows the average total points of those applicants selected for each program option. So the day program class that was selected for 2020 had an average total points of 88.719. The night program class selected in 2019 had an average total points of 82.145. Those selected for uh, the LPN transition day class in 2020, the total points average for that class was 83.512. And then the LPNs who selected, uh, who were selected for transition nights uh, had total points average of 82.64. The paramedic transition program for 2020, also those applicants had an average of 85.3 total points. So selection is mainly based on the total points score. So the higher the point, total points, the better one's chances are of being selected for the program. Applicants are then notified via email if they are accepted, on standby, or if they have been denied. Acceptance can be full meaning that all program requirements have been met, or it can be conditional, meaning that requirements, usually the prerequisite courses, must be met prior to starting the program. If those conditional requirements are not met, the student cannot start the program. 
Those accepted to the program will receive an intent form with a due date to return. After the intent form has been submitted, the student receives an enrollment packet, a background check, drug screen, health form, an immunization record, and basic life support certification must be completed. Orientation sessions will be held, um, and students will receive notification of when those orientation sessions will be conducted. If designated standby, that applicant is in a holding pattern. A few applicants may have applied to another program and were accepted to that program. Some may relocate. Some may have other life circumstances that impact their ability to start the program. That opens up an available space in the new class that was accepted. Your advisor will not know if you will get in, but will help you develop alternative plans if you do not. When an applicant is not accepted to the program, it's important to meet with the assigned academic advisor. It may have been the student did not have enough course points because he or she still needs to take required courses. The advisor will update the student's academic plan. The student can update their application for the next year once that new revised application has been posted back on the website. If the TEAS test total score negatively impacted total points, the student should retake the TEAS test. If the TEAS test score did not impact the total points, the students would not necessarily have to retake the TEAS test as long as it was taken within the application deadline, within two years, excuse me, of the application deadline. So this is my contact information. Feel free to contact me via my office phone or my office email, and I'll be happy to answer any further questions that you may have about this presentation or about the nursing program. Thank you.